the next news item is uh, sort of, I think, one worth taking a, a deep dive in. I, I saw this yesterday and was dumbfounded by it. This was the giant profile of Ben Shapiro in the yes, New York Times. Finally. By Sabrina Tavernese. What if, what if they did it, though, and they just lower the font point by like two points to make it a little <laughs> bit tinier than every other thing in the New York the Times? Little, the littlest gladiator. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the headline here is uh, Ben Shapiro, a provocative gladiator, wins ba- oh like battles to win young conservatives. Fuck off. So uh, I'm just going to dive in here. It uh, begins uh, Dateline, Salt Lake City. It says, Benjamin Shapiro strode down the aisle of a packed auditorium at the University of Utah like a prize fighter walking toward a ring. Ah! He came out to bring the pain by Method Man and was flanked by several members of the Nation of Islam. Oh, and, like a prize fighter, uh, though? Yeah, a prize fighter. Like he was pigeon weight. <laughs> uh, it was actually, no, it was cockfighting. He was going to step into the <laughs> ring to fight a rooster. Yeah. Um, so he goes, he was dressed in a dark suit jacket and a gray shirt and was followed closely by a bodyguard. So this guy has protection when oh, he goes to college Jesus. campuses. Yeah, that is the most Nobody even bitch thing I've ever yeah. heard. There have been no Ben Shapiro riots, right? No. Not no. Like no. The Milo ones. No. Nobody he, like, gives a shit about you, Benjamin. It's like he has wakes up and call, he has, he has a, a tier one operator to protect him <laughs> from like a woman with purple hair and a nose ring calling yelling at him that he's a homophobe yep, or something. That's it. Yeah. Um, so he goes. Uh, the mostly male audience sprung to its feet, cheering Shocker. him with thunderous applause. After his speech, a searing critique of mainstream liberalism. Whoa! A young man walked up to the microphone. I have watched so many of your videos. I think my girlfriend hates you, he said. You don't need to think, but <laughs> yeah, she, you don't need to think she's about She's a woman. That. That's, she uh, hates him. It's actually but once again, uh, yeah, I've watched so many of your videos. This is the, uh, the, the now the... The self-taught by YouTube pedants generation really oh, uh, coming God. to the These fore kids here. Make me dread the future more than almost anything other than global warming. Is the idea of these fucking kids just? You weaned on these idiot fucking logic YouTube videos coming of age. So uh, he's described here, Mr. Shapiro, conservative thinker, entertainer, <laughs> trash talker, and destroyer of weak arguments. This, is, this isn't a quote here. This is Sabrina, the actual person writing this oh article. Destroyer of weak arguments. <laughs> has been- Zipper of tea. <laughs> has been called the voice of the conservative millennial movement. He, he how big is this movement, by the way? He because he got sick of like the anti-Semitism at his job, and he was like completely fine with it for an extremely long time. He was there when they had the black crime vertical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he just he got so sick of being dunked on, and then he acted like he was making a principled stand. Well, what this is is, and somebody pointed this out, The reason this fucking thing exists, this article, is because the New York Times is desperate to uh, stabilize the anti-Trump conservative movement. Absolutely. They are 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 terrified without institutions. They They want the old institutions rebuilt, rehabilitated. Because Trump is such a radical threat to the norms that they value that if the Republican Party and him – are indistinguishable, then there isn't two parties anymore. Then there isn't the search for consensus in the middle anymore because one of the parties is devoted to destroying your norms. And so you have to build up the idea that there is a a continuing anti-Trump conservatism, which there absolutely is in a half a dozen zip codes in the northeast of the United States and literally nowhere else. Well, uh, it says right here, he represents the tastes of an emerging political class. <laughs> that they, like I said, the class of people, the YouTube logic pedants. That's the emerging but political class. But the thing class is, they like Hitler. T- they like Trump too. That's the thing. They might like some of his shit, but I guarantee you, most of them aren't on board with his Trump skepticism. Because the other YouTube guys they watch are like Molyneux and fucking Mister Dapperton, and they're all gung ho for Trump. So it says here, uh, if Rush Limbaugh is, is someone your what? dad listens to on his wait, car wait, radio, what did you say? if Rush Limbaugh okay. is someone your dad listens to on his car radio, Mr. Shapiro, age 33, a, Mr. God, Shapiro, Jesus Christ, he's younger than I am, uh, a graduate of Harvard Law School, is the cool kids philosopher. <laughs> Again, this is not a <laughs> quote. This is not like, she's not reading from his press materials. She is describing him as the cool kids philosopher. Okay, he's not a philosopher, no. one. And 
He has cool, never been cool. His fan, he has never been cool. There's not a single person who looks up to Ben Shapiro nope, who, who in cool. any Remotely. stretch of the imagination would no, even none. even think to call themselves cool. It would, yes. They, that, they, that even would they absurd. don't have that they, delusion. They would not have that protection. They fetishize a nerd identity. Uh, we've like, talked, oh, he's very smart and I'm cool smart stuff. for liking him. We talked about, all the other normie chads are too stupid to get we, it. We talked about this with Adam when we were talking about like Stephen Miller and like this similar puny type story. Just like, guys, yeah, like puny human guys but like, also, kids who never had any friends their own age because they were such obnoxious bitches and only like socialized with adults they sucked up to, yes, and thought that made them smarter than their peers, yep. just because they were such craven, uh, nasty little shits. Yep, and Ben, Sh- ben was, Shapiro is exactly that person. I kind of was that way. I'll admit it a little bit. I would sort of like to get rapports going with my teachers because yeah, it made me feel smarter than everybody, mm-hmm. and also because they didn't want to hang out with me. But thankfully, <laughs> at some point, I never, I never took the. I was there on the path, and I took the one less traveled by, thankfully. You decided you might actually need to develop a personality and a sense of humor and interact with your peers. I honestly think that having a sense of humor uh, really did help me kind of not get that level because the self, the sort of, the the absurdity of it, I would have been too conscious of. I would have been too conscious of how stupid and ridiculous and childish a point of view it was. And like having a sense of humor made me like not take myself seriously enough to do that, I guess. Thank goodness. Returning now to the uh, uh, the Ben Shapiro uh, publicity manual. Uh, it says here, uh, dissecting arguments with a lawyer's skill and references to Aristotle. He exists in places that young people inhabit. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. His podcast, <laughs> Ben Shapiro Show, is downloaded 10 million times every month. I'd, I'd like to fact check that. Yeah, I, yeah. 10 million well, times a month? There, none of these things have citations. There's no way Ben Shapiro has 10 million fucking podcast listeners. No, 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 no. no. Like, I think I, if saying, you go to his SoundCloud well, they're right already now, doing a thing where it's times a month and that means how many episodes are there a month so that 10 time, ten million has to be divided by the number of episodes to even come close to an estimate of actual listeners. He just has like 30 podcasts a month like he, and yeah, then like, he did. Yeah. Like he gets good listens. Like on his SoundCloud he gets about 230, 250,000 listens per episode. So yeah, that, like so that's I a lot but that's not 10. Has, he doesn't have 10 has, million listeners. No, he has maybe half a million I'd say. Uh, that seems like a, a strong estimate would be about half yeah. a million listeners. So that's about. So, uh, so that's so, still, that's is, still so, a lot of herbs. Well, it's a lot of herbs but you got thing people need to remember is that there are about a million politically engaged normal people in America. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that there those numbers it's always out of a percentage of actual Americans who are tuned into politics to the point that they wouldn't want to listen to a podcast about it. And that's like yeah. a million people on every part of the spectrum, yeah. from Nazis to tankies. All of, that's a very, very small fragment of the population. Everybody else just is checked out or has very vague political views and doesn't, but doesn't make it integrated into their day-to-day life. It says here, 70% of his audience is under the age of 40. Ben is the source of a lot of philosophy for young conservatives. Yeah. Again, there's that word philosophy again. I don't think they really underst- well, these Do they understand think, what the word philosophy these people means. Think but under 40 is a also includes under 18. <laughs> yeah. No, these are the bowtie bow, bow nerds, the fucking roller backpack shitheads who all think that they can get like a fucking uh, radio deal or a book deal by being a precocious little conservative. Yeah. So, um,. This is what uh, Cassie Dillon, who's a senior at Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts, who has written for Mr. Shapiro's website, The Daily Wire, describes him. And uh, she says, I think it would be really hard to find a young conservative who doesn't know who Ben Shapiro is. Mr. Shapiro is trying to define conservatism. Yeah, half of them think he's a fucking cuck, but they know who he is. (laughs) Mr. Shapiro is trying to define conservatism at a time when its meaning is up for grabs, and the Republican Party and the traditional conservative media outlets like Fox are built for older audiences. That's putting it mildly. (laughs) (laughs) He does not like President Trump, and he disagrees with his old boss at Breitbart News, Stephen Bannon, that Trumpism is the future of the Republican Party. He likes to point out that Mr. Trump won fewer votes in Wisconsin than Mitt Romney in 2012 and fewer votes in Michigan than George W. Bush in 2004. Most Republicans voted for Mr. Trump not because they loved him, he argues, but because they hated Hillary Clinton. But he is not a moderate. His views no, they love Daddy Trump. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do him. not fool yourself. Are they you fucking kidding love me? They him. love him more than they've ever loved a politician. They love him more than even at the height of the Gulf War frenzy, they love George W. Bush. And they always will. 
but he is not a moderate. His views are extremely conservative. Tra- and summarizing his views uh, are transgenderism is a mental illness, <gasps> as per the Encyclopedia of Mental Disorders before 2013. Yes, blacks have been historically discriminated against. No, institutions are not broadly discriminating against them today. The rich pay too much tax, abortion should be illegal, social security ought to be privatized, and Obamacare repealed. These are not, though, I mean, what he's talking about, those are like policy positions. Those are not like some kind of fundamental, not a philosophy. ideological, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not like, here's my conservative base. I believe that, you know, family should be the primary political unit or, you know, any of those things that supposedly make someone a philosopher. I think, to, in fairness to Mr. Shapiro, except for Cassie Dillon, who used it, I think this is the author of this piece of confusion. Yeah, more this is than just his. a vapid person, like yeah. every idiot who writes about politics and has no understanding of it, of it even a basic level of how it fucking works. Yeah. So uh, they think policy positions equals philosophy. That's yeah. how. Th- that's how shallow their understanding of politics because is. it's nothing but takes that's all they that's all they encounter exactly is takes on the policies of the day so that's the only way they can relate to political philosophy is by creating a mosaic of them uh Continuing, it says uh, here, uh, liberals loathe Mr. Shapiro. They say he is a pugilist who has built his brand on the nation's addiction to outrage. He's part of an industry that whips up conservatives against the left, they say, and the fact that his audience is mostly young will deepen the divide for years to come. This is hilarious. There's like, that cockfighting again. Yeah. He's a pugilist. <laughs> I love that, that his his opponents think he's a pugilist. He, oh, that Ben Shapiro, he's just too tough. Well, he's I, too much of a fighter. I'm so annoyed. I don't think anyone and hates Ben Shapiro the way they hate, like... Like I don't think he draws a lot of ire. He's just he's just very easy to dunk on because yeah. he's like a silly little person. He's a silly little elf man. Yeah, and it's easy to dunk on him. Well, Nobody engages with him or is 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 outraged by his his ability to destroy all <laughs> political views. I mean, they logic. literally threw him on Breitbart so that they could say that they weren't anti semites anymore. I mean, this is the guy who like he's his slam dunk case against the Bernie Sanders argument for. Health care is a right is uh, I don't have a right to go to a fancy furniture store and pick out anything I want and not take pay that. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a pin in that right now because it gives an example later of the laser like precision with which he di- dis- dissects arguments with his and, and the you know the, the careful jabs uppercuts and combos that he does to <laughs> yeah. annihilate his enemies. I just I just hold that keep that thought in mind. Yeah. I, what I want to say about this passage here about how she's summarizing how liberals dislike him because he whips up outrage against the left and that his audience is young and will deepen the divide. I think this is an unknowing but telling description of liberals who are just mad at conservatives for like they're whipping up people against us and they're effectively <laughs> mobilizing opposition to our policies. Yeah, exactly. It's not fair. And rather than just, uh, you know, you know, coming back straight at them, right. you know, or whipping up people against fucking conservatives. We agreed right. not to actually fight. Yeah. So it says, going on, it says, even some former fans say Mr. Shapiro is a brilliant polemicist, but in a tribal nation, he's just one more partisan mobilizing the troops. Okay. If you had said a former fan of Christopher Hitchens said that he was a brilliant polemicist, okay, that scans. I'll yeah. accept it. Ben Shapiro is a terrible writer. We've read his shit before on this show, both fiction and non. His voice and is an unlistenable just... chipmunk screech oh that God, nobody but the most masochistic dipshits could bear for more than five minutes. But like to be like cons- like a brilliant polemicist is someone like or even Peter Hitchens, even Chris's mm-hmm. fucking brother. If we're yeah. talking about the right, we're talking about someone who can like construct. A, a sentence, or like have some sort of like have bite signature or, lines or that verb, people remember, or, or like, or yeah, just like to have like a, some style or or panache to which like the the arguments or, or the things that they write. Shapiro has well, absolutely to be able none to make an argument that points out inconsistencies and you know gives you some semblance of higher ground. Uh, you know, in terms of in terms of like ideology, like to actually be like, well, you can't answer this question, the which only- which so many liberals have been unable to like meet those consistent. We're so out of we're so out of fucking uh, 
practice with all of this shit. We've just been watching The Daily Show for 20 fucking years. So, I mean, yeah. So, like, he's been, you know, if we're going to go with the pugilist, you know, thing, he's just been fighting tomato cans. Yeah. Like, as soon as someone disagrees with them, they're like, ah, 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 you know, like, they don't. You're, you're not supposed to do that. So, uh, continue. The only quote that he has in all of his fucking writing that anyone remembers is that awful catchphrase. Facts don't care about your feelings. That's it. That's his only yeah, memorable that's piece just of like a tweet. Wordage. It's yeah, exactly. It's a tweet. So uh, reading on, he's uh, conservatives say he is a force for good. Liberals may not like his conclusions, but they are guiding young people at a time when the conservative movement is adrift and ideas of white nationalism are competing for their attention. Okay, it's basically just the fact that he's like. An Orthodox Jew and really a big fan of Israel is basically the only thing that separates him from white nationalism and yep. the alt right. He is a died in the fucking wool racist. Look up any of his fucking tweets about Trayvon Martin or Michael Brown and how they basically deserve to die. Yep. No, there's one tweet of his where he said Trayvon would have been 21 today if he hadn't chosen to bounce a man's head off the sidewalk before being shot. Yep. You know, so like I, again, like this idea that he's guiding young people away from uh, white nationalism is absurd. Yeah, there are only the barest differences between him and Trump on any st- uh, sub- substantive issue, so that the difference is totally just egos, basically. And the rest of this paragraph goes on to talk about how you know he's an Orthodox Jew and was one of the first to call out the alt right movement and denouncing it as racist. I mean, ra- how is he denouncing it as racist? They believe the same th- same things about black people and immigrants as yep. he does. It's it's just. Basically, what there's what they're working towards, either consciously or subconsciously, the Trump people and the anti-Trump conservatives are moving towards a, essentially that agreement that is that I think uh, Ellie Valley did the drawing of of uh, Adelson shaking hands with Pepe. It's basically transformation, uh, 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 a population transfer where all the good Jews go to Israel. And then we have these white ethno states that are organized on the same principles as Israel is. But basically, the problem for Jews is just that they're here and they need to be there, which is what they agree with. Yeah, they, the hard they right, would prefer the that. Think, think, yeah, of course they do. And they're moving towards an agreement that that's it's what the happens. Same reason Everybody the, the gets, K, it's the same reason the KKK supported Liberia. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, uh, yes, it's a future of these, these uh, ethnic Bantu stands armed to the teeth and surrounded with walls. Uh, and I like here at the end of this paragraph, it says he received 38 percent of all anti-Semitic tweets aimed at journalists in 2016. This is a statistic from the ADL, which is like to be fair, that, <laughs> was, that, that, that's a that whole was me yeah. tweeting at him over and over again. I'm going to fold you in half and shove you in a big gulp cup. See, I, first, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I would really like to see an audit of how many of these abusive tweets were genuinely anti-Semitic or half of them were like being like, I'm going to trap you in a dollhouse and have my cat eat you. <laughs> At least half of them were Felix, though. Yeah, uh, exactly. Excuse me, but cats, those were the Nazis in Ot Spiegelman's mouse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just love that the, the ADO or someone out there is just keeping actual statistics on how badly he gets owned and dunked on on Twitter all the time. So going on now, no, this is really great. Uh, the, there's a real battle for hearts and minds going on the right right now, and Ben is one of the main warriors, said David French, <laughs> columnist for the National Review. warrior, pugilistic. Woo! Dude, this, this article is bringing back so many of our favorites. Oh, God. David French. And, and you know, you can, you All can, of the cucks are coming out to defend my, Ben and call him a take, warrior. You can take my word for it that he's a warrior. I understand war. I went to Iraq. And I, I was in charge of ordering uh, Jimmy John's for the office. At the Jag Corps in the Green Zone. I know what war is. Mr. French calls Mr. Shapiro a principled gladiator. <laughs> they keep using this language. It's insane. <sighs> this is like, again, warrior, I just gladiator, him, pugilist. I'm just imagining Ben Shapiro with a fucking trident and a net fighting in the Coliseum. <laughs> But and it's tickling. Like I said, glad all the all the, all the language and, and uh, you know jobs of, of combat and war. This all <laughs> are, are you not entertained? This is <laughs> this is all due to the fact that Ben Shapiro goes to college campuses and triggers snowflakes yep. by being like there are two genders. Sorry, <laughs> but they don't. That, I mean, that, he that's, doesn't that's even get battle. the backlash. The, the, no, no uh, that's the, just it. Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody gives yeah. a shit. It's like remember when Charles Kirk tweeted, I'm going on a tour of college campuses. Better get ready, Antifa. People are like, who are you? Nobody cares about you, Charles. Wherever you go, your fucking acolytes decide to put diapers on. It's one of the most entertaining things in the world and you don't need Antifa for it to happen. So, uh, 
going on here. It says, uh, his aggressive tone draws an audience. Aggressive tone. No, it's a high-pitched tone. It's not aggressive. It is the... Uh, like only dogs the can way, hear like- the aggression in it. <laughs> it's the whining keen of someone trying to return something to Best Buy. <laughs> I was told that I had 90 days that you see on the receipt. It's only been 87. So he goes... Uh, Finger manager. He does not attack unfairly or stoke anger for the sake of it or mischaracterize his opponent's positions. He even hits his own side, as he did with Sean Hannity for not weighing in on Roy Moore, the embattled Alabama Republican, and Mr. Bannon for supporting him. He appeals to the better angels of his audience's <laughs> nature while still being a pugilist, and that's quite oh, a skill. <laughs> Mr. Somebody French went said. to thesaurus.com and just quit trying. All right, uh. Now it gets into like, the, okay, this is great. Mr. Shapiro grew up in Los Angeles in a Jewish family of Reagan Republicans. His parents both worked in Hollywood, his mother as an executive of a TV company and his father as a composer. They lived in a small house, his parents in one bedroom, and he and his three sisters in the other. They had political discussions at the dinner table. He was patriotic. He dressed up as John Adams every year for Halloween from the age of five. (laughs) Ah, Oh, my God! He had a favorite musical, 1776. Of course, you fancy little man. He, so this is a child who dressed up as John Adams every year. Oh, oh God. I mean, I think it says from the age of five. It doesn't tell you what age yeah, he stopped doing say. that. I don't think he ever did. It's no. Not, like, basically his personality. He's Jewish Martin Prince. It's- <laughs> Eat wax with a wet noodle, Limtard. <laughs> <laughs> they stole my dicky. <laughs> I want to see Ben Shapiro wearing a t-shirt that says Wang Computers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my geode must be acknowledged. So it goes here. Uh, uh, <laughs> so often I felt turning on Fox. It makes you dumber. But you listen to Ben Shapiro, and you're likely to be both entertained and enlightened," said Charlie Sykes, a conservative oh, pundit. That fucking asshole! I don't know who that is. Oh, he's a he's a he's a Milwaukee local drive time conservative fucking radio shithead, and he's a reliable voice of reaction and suburban racism for generation in the in the Milwaukee County area. But then Trump came along and he wasn't going to oh, get on board. This is the guy board. that's been profiled recently yep. as just being like, oh, wait a second. I think, you know, my, oh, I'm, I'm shocked that all of the listeners whose base prejudices I've been stoking yeah. on the radio in their car for the last 30 yeah. years yep. have yeah. uh, weird racist feelings yep. and, heart, and actually admire and love Donald Trump. Yeah. The enti- my entire job for 30 years was channeling the argument that you shouldn't let the inner city buses go out to Waukesha County. That's the sum total of the fucking ideology on display for 30 years. And now Trump has gone too far. Well, but he retired from his show. He doesn't have a radio show anymore. Now he wrote a book and he's now a touring. Oh, right. He's a gladiator yeah. in his own right. Well, no, you know? he's described here as a conservative pundit and Trump critic. Yeah. And he goes on to describe Ben as he's high octane. <laughs> <laughs> He re- <laughs> he's high octane. He reads books. His mind works <laughs> he really <is> fast. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to get under people's skin. He's clearly part of this younger generation. <laughs> I could imagine Bill Buckley looking down and smiling. Jesus no, I can imagine Christ. Bill Buckley looking down on him for being a Jewish upstart, but <laughs> yeah. he would be smiling, but it would be the smile of the sort of rigor mortis that was permanently affixed on yeah. his disgusting Gila monster like uh, <laughs> visage. Visage, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so cute. A Hebrew. I, that I love you. That, the that, like I said, uh, Charlie Sykes is like what he's so. He's so impressed. He thinks Ben is such a breath of fresh air and just, you know, just a real whip smart because he reads books. <laughs> Every one of these fucking profiles. Yeah. When they try to elevate one of these shitheads as an intellectual heavyweight, either either side, either alt, uh, alt-right or, or n- and never Trump, like Bannon, it's always, he's read several books. <laughs> he can quote lines from one of three different books. Yeah, I think I think we we pointed this out before, but the idea that Steve Bannon has read all of Edward Gibbon's book on the fall of Absurd. the Roman Empire. He read the Wikipedia article. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So it says uh people often discover Mr. Shapiro by seeing a video clip of him arguing with someone. <laughs> 
Some have been watched millions of times, like one from a college in Michigan in February. After a back and forth with a young woman in the audience about transgenderism, Mr. Shapiro asked her how old she was. Okay, keep in mind that all the times previously to this point, he has been described as a a brilliant polemicist, someone who dissects arguments with a lawyerly skill, and is a, like... uh, Shaping the philosophy of a generation of young minds. A level one logic master. Okay, this is his argument here. Mr. Shapiro asked her how old she was. She was 22. Why aren't you 60, he asked. What is the problem with you identifying as 60? (laughs) The young woman looked at him and hesitated, lowering the microphone slightly. It's not the same as gender, she said. You can't just... Mr. Shapiro looked at her, his face impassive. You're right, he said. You can't magically change your gender. You can't magically change your sex. You can't magically change your age. That, that was his brilliant... like That, that was like, you know, uh, fucking Cicero or something right here. In an age of partisan warfare on college campuses, this video clip is a rare weapon. It is also vintage Shapiro. <laughs> He takes apart arguments in ways that make the conservative conclusion seem utterly logical, like putting a key in a locked door. The clip has about 47 million views on Facebook. Yeah, it's just like putting a key in a locked door. His argument makes it seem like his position is just the only logical choice. It's amazing. If you are indeed have the brain of a golden retriever. Yeah, it's like a linguistic magic trick. Just gormless fucking roops. But the thing is, is, that is the number one valued skill among people in political journalism is the one thing they can't teach and the one thing that you need more than anything is absolute just brain dead gormless naive belief in what powers that be tell you about anything because that's the only way that your shit's going to get read because anything else that's too skeptical is going to be too hostile to people who your your peers and your newspaper need to keep cultivating as sources so it never gets fucking published uh speaking of um so but David French says here, there is a hunger in conservative millennial land for a different kind of voice, Mr. French said. They want someone who will unapologetically stand up for conservative values, but who is also articulating a movement they can feel proud of. So I guess that's as, as, as opposed to the alt-right, yeah. I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah, there. yeah, it's all just about optics. But the question I have, did they actually talk to a single millennial conservative? Well, they talked to the uh, the college senior from Mount Holyoke at the very beginning who said he's like a philosopher. Uh, but um, isn't she doesn't, no, she doesn't count because she works for him. That's true. So she doesn't count. Do they talk to any unaffiliated millennial conservatives in this thing? Well, we've read it. I've read every word of this so far. So, so they don't. Yeah. There's no actual testimony from anyone who is the market for this shit other than somebody who he pays. Okay. Good to know. So uh, he- here's where the article, I think, really shows the complete naivete and just like how easily rooked uh, the- the- anyone the New York Times sends out to cover the right is by all of this shit. So uh, this is uh, the-, the author's writing here. Mr. Shapiro has always been deeply conservative and does not pretend to be objective. But he says his market niche is giving clear-eyed reads of current events, not purely partisan rants. He is often compared to his former colleague at Breitbart, Milo Yiannopoulos. On the surface, they both seem the same. Both speak... What? Of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're both fancy lads. But, well, know, here, 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 here are the of, similarities. One of them dresses like a golden girl when he goes on tour. <laughs> Here are the similarities. Both speak on college campuses. Both draw protests. Both used to work for Mr. Bannon at Breitbart. Both are young. In fact, they are very different. Oh, uh, no. What? Mr. Yiannopoulos, a protege of Mr. Bannon, was good at shocking audiences, saying things like feminism is cancer. But critics say that he was empty of ideas, a kind of nihilistic rodeo clown who was not even conservative. Mr. Shapiro broke with Mr. Bannon last year, saying that Breitbart had become a propaganda tool for Mr. Trump. Mr. Yiannopoulos' act collapsed this year. They don't say why. Yeah, they don't oh, weird. That. But uh, the fact that it lasted so long says a lot about the right's fury against mainstream lizard- liberalism, Mr. Shapiro said. It goes on for a little bit, but uh, Shapiro says here... Trump won the nomination because he was anti-left, not because of any political viewpoints, Mr. Shapiro said in an interview. He was slapping people on the left, and people on the right went, yeah, those people need to be slapped. So, and he says, uh, Mr. Shapiro does it too. He thinks it's easy to provoke the left, which he says has become intellectually flabby after decades of cultural dominance. That really bad. That's true, to a certain degree. And he says, it's not good... Oh, sorry. 
that they're not good at arguing and relies instead on taboos and punishing people who violate them. This is the essence of his stump speech. The left believes in a hierarchy of victimhood, he says in Utah. If you are LGBTQ, then we suggest that you are the very top of the victimhood hierarchy. You have been the most victimized in the United States, and therefore your opinion must be taken with the most gravitas. And then he says here, uh, black folks have been historically victimized. In the I love United it when States. everyone gets all folksy when they start saying folks. Black folks have, have been historically victimized in the United States, which of course is true. But the idea that every black person now is being individually victimized by the United States is not true. Then he got <laughs> to the group that made up most of his audience. Way down at the bottom are white straight males. Those are people whose opinions do not matter at all because those are the people who are beneficiaries of the system. They don't get to talk about the system because they were the ones who built Which the system. Which is why I'm being paid to speak to you right now. Um, so he says, in concluding, uh, the article says, Mr. Shapiro says he's about more than tribal polemics. In an age of combative politics, you have to be a fighter to be in the game. And he says he's willing to defend conservatism against those on the right as well as the left. I'm trying to militantly defend conservative ideas, he said. I'm not going to be anti-left for the sake of it. And that is the end of Ben Shapiro, Young Gladiator. The fighter. The fighter. Ben Shapiro, David O. Russell film. (laughs) (laughs) Not an argument. Not an argument. Not an argument. I'm not particularly worried about Ben Shapiro. No. No. He's being propped up by these people who are desperate to have a decent opposition. That's what they've been panicking about more than anything is the idea that they're going to lose that that uh, that decent anti-Trump opposition that might hold horrible views, but that but stands with. Well, here's norms. a good example. I mean, I think there is a difference between the never Trump conservatives and that they're on their way out. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm talking about when I talk about how there's tension inside any kind of broad right wing movement or left wing movement for that matter is that these these right now there still are these separate strands, but at some point the pressure is going to come, and one of them, the one that's dying to survive with whatever it has left is going to be absorbed into the greater one and then it will be part of a greater thing even though well some of them will just die though well, some yeah, of them I will mean, turn well, into I mean, like this weird old. esoteric yeah they're literally old they are literally going to die first that's for sure no but i even think i even think Sh- shapiro their great white hope or whatever like he's going to try and carve out a niche for this but he's just going to become more and more marginal and i don't think conservatism is going to go back to no, the, the I way agree. it was. Yeah, it, there, yeah, it is like a dying trumpet. It's a re, it's a retreating sort of it's a it's a rump. It's it's a it's a dwindling rump. Yeah, and they they want to make it viable because the alternative is a, he's a, a essentially like cosplaying party. And a that's, kind they of can't accept that. a kind of conservatism that that it is just on its way out. Yeah, because he's a nerd. Yeah, but the the press's main investment is in keeping the sense that there are two opposing forces that we can sort of negotiate with and are, are, are operating from the same rule book. 